Now that we've looked at the contents of this AFNI PY file, let's go ahead and actually run it. <clears throat> to do that through Unix, we usually type a dot and a backslash, and then the name of the file, so so1.ap.simple. It just means execute this entire command, which is in the file. We could just copy this and paste this on the command line, and that would also work. <clears throat> the only reason that we do this is just to make it a little bit simpler to put all these files into individual text files. It makes it a little bit cleaner. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and run that. Once we do, we see some output here. Don't pay any attention to all of this. That's just my computer. But anything with two asterisks, that's usually an important warning that you might encounter some error or you might need to pay extra close attention. So first off, this warning means it's removing the first two TRs, like we specified in the command above, from the beginning of each run. Why that's important is that can affect how your timing files are. So the way they are right now in the sample data set are fine. We don't need to change them. But if you were to have any sort of alteration to the number of TRs in your experiment, make sure to also make the necessary adjustments to your timing files. In this example, if these timing files were not already adjusted, we would subtract uh, two TRs from them. Okay, a TR in this experiment was two seconds, so two times two seconds would be four seconds that we'd subtract from each event. So TCAT, the number of repetitions is now 150. So each functional data set had 152 TRs or volumes within them. Now they have 150. Okay, Volreg, they sub indices. So we didn't specify this in that command. So this is just going to the default. This is co-registration, or sorry, volume registration. And what this means is that we're going to be registering to the third volume of uh, the first functional run. Okay, remember that in AFNI land, stuff starts at zero. So zero represents the first element of something. Updating polar to three from run length equals 300 seconds. Because each run is 300 seconds long, okay, just be for view, there are 150 TRs and each one is two seconds. So there's 300 seconds total in each run. This whole polar thing, you don't need to worry about it too much, but what it does is it increases the longer your runs get. So if it was 400 seconds, it would be a polar to four. That's just what order polynomial it does to try to get rid of any sort of drift artifacts or anything that is unrelated to actual functional activation. So don't worry too much about it. We'll add 3D cost sim table. Okay, we'll worry about that later. The, this just means it's using a default. It will not apply epi auto mask to the data. This is just a change from previous incarnations of apni underscore proc.py in that we're not going to do any masking or excluding any voxels until we get to a group level analysis, which will probably be in some sort of normalized space. All right, script is in this file. This has been generated, and it gives us an example for how to execute it. Execute meaning how to run it. So remember we're using the T-shell. Okay, in the first video we talked about how to set that up as a default. And this XEF command or options, that means print everything to the terminal before running it. That's what the X means. E means terminate if there's any error. And F means don't run the startup T-shell script. So it's gonna say run that script, this proc.ft script we've just generated. And then also pipe anything, both to standard output, standard error, and also shovel all that information into a file called output.proc.ft. That's mainly for debugging purposes. The next tutorial will actually run this thing and see what happens.